Okay guys, so once again, I'm gonna have to apologize for how late this review is. I know, I know it's several days late, but this week I actually do have a legitimate excuse. Uh, I was working all weekend, and when I actually did finally sit down to do my SmackDown review, uh, it turned out that my internet server had cut out for the whole of Edinburgh, so uh, there was no internet for anybody. Um, but I'm doing it now, I'm reviewing SmackDown for July the 3rd, and Callum has said before, that we wrestling fans find it easier to criticize things than to praise them, and this is probably true because I am a little lackluster in doing my SmackDown reviews as regularly as I would like, but this one needed to have comment passed about it. SmackDown for some time now, since the draft, really, since the draft, has been the absolute epitome of what a wrestling show should be. It's been absolutely, not flawless, but damn close. The people booking it were really, really getting it pretty right most of the time, and it's been a joy to watch. And I think I mistakenly believed it could go on for quite a lot longer. I thought, yes, we're going to get a whole year of this, there'll be no drafting or anything like that. And unfortunately, that's not how it's turned out to be. And this SmackDown wasn't just not great, it wasn't just not fantastic, it really wasn't very good at all. Overall, I would say it was a pretty bad television taping. Um, and we're going to go into that now. Uh, again, once again, I apologize because I'm not fresh on this. I'm going to have to read off my notes. Uh, now, first we start off with a CM Punk promo who appears to explain the instance at the bash. Um, and he makes the fairly rational argument that he had this eye injury and he was trying to lash out at Jeff Hardy and accidentally kick the referee instead. Which actually, I've got to be honest, when I was watching the match from the bash, I uh, I didn't even get that. Maybe it was the camera angle it was from, maybe I was just in a slow mood. I just thought that Punk had obviously deliberately kicked the referee, but when they showed it back and showed it on the camera angles they showed it on, it actually looked quite plausible. Um, and CM Punk comes out and says that, you know, Jeff Hardy's demanding a rematch and all that stuff, and basically says he'd be happy to give him one, but what he wants first is an apology from Jeff Hardy for, you know, calling him a liar and calling him a cheat and all these things, which, you know, is presented fairly rationally. And then Teddy Long appears. Teddy Long, who, I love this, who has been put on probation, Teddy Long, for uh, not impressing Vince McMahon with, you know, I know it's all kayfabe, but with his booking of SmackDown. So, in the storyline, Vince McMahon is criticizing the man who, in storyline, has created the best wrestling television show in years. Like, that's so typical, and the way that this was booked this week looks a lot more like something that Vince McMahon would book. Back in about 1998, 1999, I didn't really mind Vince's booking all that much, but see when Vince sticks his oar in now, it's horrible, I mean, it's really bad, he has absolutely no idea what works. And this is a good example of it. He's basically sending an openly critical message about how good SmackDown was for the past few months, and it really annoys me. So Teddy Long comes down and says that uh, he's not impressed by CM Punk's excuses and he's going to make another match for Jeff Hardy and CM Punk at Night of Champions. Not really sure I want to see that. Uh, or at least I want a third participant or something different. I'm not really into watching them wrestle again. It won't be bad, but... I feel like it needs spiced up, um, and uh, he also makes the main event for uh, that evening, which will be the new Unified Tag Team Champions, Edge and Chris Jericho. Don't know what they're going to do with that now, by the way, because it was a piece of genius booking, and now apparently Edge is out until 2010, early 2010, with a, uh, uh, a torn Achilles tendon, is it? Something like that? Um, which is awful, because Edge is one of the most infinitely watchable wrestlers out there. And uh, this gimmick will have to end immediately, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, the main event will be uh, the Tag Team Champions against the mismatch of CM Punk and Jeff Hardy, uh, which is Teddy Long shaking up the booking, apparently. It sounds pretty bog standard to me. Um, Hardy appears and uh, refuses to apologize quite petulantly, but I suppose I understand what they're doing. And says he doesn't want to hear CM Punk's excuses. Uh, and Punk then launches into a spiel about how he defends his principles and says if Jeff Hardy knew him at all as a person, he would never question his integrity and he would never question, he would never say that he would lie and cheat to win because that's not what CM Punk's about. And uh, then he says that Hardy Play does an interesting promo to balance his straight edge gimmick against uh, 
the fact that Jeff Hardy had well-known substance abuse problems, saying that he can see Hardy thinking about hitting him and says that he should do what he should have done a long time ago and just say no, which I actually quite liked. I thought that was quite good. Well said. Uh, so they all head off backstage. And then we get the first wrestling of the night, and this is where it really started to go wrong because SmackDown has been great because of its great wrestling. I mean, really, really fantastic wrestling. Really good booking, but some fantastic wrestling. So we open <laughs> with uh, SmackDown's newest trade acquisition, Finlay, old and can't wrestle, uh, against Ricky Ortiz, just can't wrestle. Um, this was... Fucking atrocious. Um, it was slow, it was dull, there were no real interesting spots, nothing that particularly made me go, ooh, or, oh, that was nice. Um, I think about the best thing in it was like a, a back body drop that was executed quite nicely. No, 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 a back suplex that was executed quite quite nicely. Apart from, I mean, this was really, really, really awful. Um, and, uh, yeah, Finley beats Ortiz. That was obviously going to happen uh, with the Celtic Cross. I would rather these people both got released. I have no interest in ever watching them wrestle again. Hopeless. Hopeless. An omen. Um, next we get a backstage segment that doesn't make any sense. It's a really flirty segment between Maria and Dolph Ziggler. And basically it implies that the previous evening they had sex with each other. This doesn't make sense because... Ziggler is a heel, and he's a very firmly established heel. And much as I think Maria is terrible, and trust me, I do think she's terrible, she's a face. She's probably the most overfaced female in the whole company. I don't know why, it's totally inexplicable, but she's so over as a face. She gets the most incredible pops when she comes out, and I don't know why. Uh, but it makes no sense to seemingly set them as, up as a couple because he's very much a heel. There's nothing about his character that could make him a face. It's not like he's Santino Morella who's funny. Like, I don't understand. Um, this, I don't want to see it either. Like, if anything, I think Maria will bring Ziggler down. Um, anyway, next we have Dolph Ziggler against R-Truth. Which, you know, obviously Dolph Ziggler is going to win because he's the one receiving the push. I don't know why R2 doesn't get pushed, but he's not getting R pushed. Um, this match was okay. It was pretty short. Nothing particularly exciting happened in it. I'm still not 100% sold on Dolph Ziggler. I quite like him. I quite like him. He's not bad. He could be a lot worse. But I'm not, you know, I'm not overly impressed. Whereas R Truth is fantastic. Um, R Truth had a nice bicycle kick. Well, it was alright. I, a month or two ago, he wrestled Mike Knox. Is Mike Knox still there? Has he been released? I don't know. Someone Could someone tell me? Um, and he had the most beautiful bicycle kick. I mean, the absolute... I love the bicycle kick. I think it's a very underused maneuver. I think it's a beautiful kick. And uh, he did a beautiful one against Mike Knox. This one wasn't quite as good, but it was nice. Um, but yeah, there was a slight altercation where uh, Ziggler got the momentum and hit that finisher, which is basically a reverse pay dirt kind of neck breaker thing. For the win, uh, I knew Ziggler was going to win, so there wasn't much suspense in this match. It was okay, but it could have been better. If, if it had a little more time, then maybe it would have been better. Now, moving on. Why the fuck is Word Up a Smackdown segment and not an internet segment anymore? It was bad enough that it was clogging up WWE.com. I've written in my notes, Why the fuck is Word Up a Smackdown and non-internet segment now? Die, 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 die. That is what I've written in my notes. That was my gut reaction to this happening on TV. Um, it's Crime Time and uh, Eve Torres uh, nature watching in the, the backstage area. Um, they were defining some word that I've forgotten what it was. I think it sounded like something offensive, but I can't remember what the word was. Uh, and, you know, they saw Jimmy Wang Yang, the Asian redneck, and they saw someone else, I think. And then they see, uh, Jesse, who fits the description of the word they were trying to find was, you know, someone who's, like, trying to be gangster who isn't gangster at all. And Jesse comes over and does his fake gangster stuff. Why has Jesse not been released yet? Oh, I know! It's because he's fucking Terry Gordy's son! I do not need this man on my television! 
He is shit. Anyway, I'm just going to get angrier, so please switch over to part two if you feel like you can bear it. Thanks a lot.